Hey guys, salut, this is Alex, so welcome back to the Wine Making Odyssey. It is episode 4 now of how to make freaking wine. Today I'm turning a cloudy and unbalanced wine must into a crystal clear, almost, and round red liqueur. In this series, I'm sharing my whole experience about wine making at home, from fresh grapes all the way to beautiful wine, and using only cheap and basic equipment. Of course, along the way, I will share fun facts and useful tips. Whether you want to make wine or you just want to drink it, let's be honest, remember to always act safely and responsibly. In the previous episode, we completed the alcoholic fermentation, which is now completely over. And now I am pushing a bit further the wine must before moving to the next stage. It's called macerating the must, and it will give it more colors and more flavors. I'm doing it for about three days, but you can go up to a week if your grapes were particularly ripe and if you want a strong red wine at the end. I guess I have lower expectations, I just want an okay wine at the end. It could be the name of it, let me know in the comments. Every day shake the bucket vigorously and also do a quick tasting just to be sure it's not going too astringent. It's time to change container now. Buckets have done their work brilliantly, but from now on, I'm gonna use a big collapsible water container instead. And you will understand why in just a few moments. Pour the wine must through a sieve into a freshly sanitized container. Technically, you could press the wine must to get even more juices and colors from it, but in my case, uh, the liquid was already quite astringent, so I did not want to push that furthermore prevent it from oxidizing, get all the air out. So a few episodes ago I told you there are two fermentations in the wine making process. The first one is the alcoholic fermentation, uh, we did a good job on this one, and the second one is called the malolactic fermentation or conversion, and it's happening right now. In the container the cloudy winey liquid tastes quite tart and green. It has a very much in your face acidity. Well that's mainly due to the presence of natural malic acid. Luckily for us, some naturally occurring bacteria called lactic acid bacteria can turn a rough acid into a lactic acid, which is softer, fuller and rounder for our taste buds. And this whole process is called the malolactic fermentation. So back then, a few months ago, uh, I thought, why would I buy any stupid commercial bacteria? It's gonna be fine on its own. I don't need them. Nobody needs. Well, uh, uh, here I am. A few months later, I think my malolactic went well, but I'm not sure, and it's killing me. So as always, I do the mistake so that you don't have to uh, get those commercially available bacteria. It's cheap. It's widely available. Yes, me. And now let the wine rest for about 15 days in a dark but warm place. Over time you will probably notice a tiny gas emission in that container. That's absolutely normal as carbon dioxide is liberated in the process. So it also makes the wine a bit fizzy during that period. So here's a quick tip. In fact, we can use that fizziness in our advantage. As soon as the liquid isn't fizzy anymore, then the malolactic reaction is over and we are ready to move on to the next step. I am now siphoning all that liquid into another uh, sanitized collapsible container using clear tubbing and gravity. That action is called racking. It allows clarification as lees and impurities will stay at the bottom of the previous container. That whole racking process will be performed three times total during the next six months. Every time we will add a bit of sulfites into the new container to stop any bacteria activity and to prevent it from turning into vinegar that would be the worst oxidation. Whenever you add sulfite, you need to be accurate and not like roughly accurate, you need to be super accurate. So I will share all the details, all the calculus in the description box down below. Following that racking process, you will have to wait for two months every time. 
So doing it in real time would be probably a bit long-ish. So let's just fast forward. It's now been six months and the wine is ready to be bottled and labeled and tasted. I can't wait for this, but that has to be for episode 5, because there are already loads of information to process in this episode. So guys, that's it. I really hope you enjoy this episode and that you enjoy the whole adventure, the whole journey, the whole winemaking project. If you do, then please give it a big thumbs up and share that over all your social media. You know how it works. It really helps me a lot. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Also, whenever you post something online, always, always tag me in and use the hashtag spread it like butter. I think an extra high five goes to all my Patreons out there. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Uh, I've got something for you. It's coming soon to Patreon. And last people click subscribe because I make new videos every week and it's always about pushing the food boundaries. Like for example, that video I made recently about wok hey, wok chi, where I hacked my little portable stove into a 22,200 BTU monster version. So you see, it's not always about the French boundaries, it's about the world boundaries. Take care, stay curious, bye bye, salut.